back to the Officialized Experience. As always, I'm your host, Kyle Sconowell, and I'm joined with Kirk Cousins today. And Kirk, I just have a few questions before we get started. Um, did we? Did the Vikings play a game last night? I believe we did. You did? Okay. And, and who, did, who did they play? Uh, the Green Bay Packers. Oh. The Green Bay. Aren't they one of our biggest division rivals? You could say the biggest. Uh, and was it in primetime, too? It was. And did the Vikings win that game? Uh, yes, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> Victory Monday, baby, <laughs> against the evil Green Bay Packers. It feels better than most today. It, it sure does. Very, very satisfying victory. And today is extra special because we are joined by... Offensive lineman, Mike Remmers. Mike, welcome to the show. Mike, welcome. Hey there. Thanks for coming on. First podcast ever, so I really appreciate <laughs> wow. it. It was a little tough to get a guest yeah. today because Coach Zimmer canceled Monday's work day. So not many guys are in the building, but I went around the building and we found Mike Remmers, who's as good a guest as any. We were planning on getting some guests, yeah. but when he canceled, made it a little more difficult, and Mike comes in to save the the day. Even if I'm the 10th or 11th choice, I really appreciate it. (laughs) We went through most of the defense, half the offense. Special teams. And then Mike Grammer. And then here's Mike Grammer. So, (laughs) So, Mike, maybe you can give us – go ahead. So, Mike uh, is a unique NFL journey, and I want him to just in like 60 seconds give us your NFL journey. Go. We came in the same year together in 2012, right? Right. Okay, so go. Okay. Uh, undrafted to Denver, uh, cut first, first round of cuts, so I was cut home for about two weeks, picked up Tampa's practice squad, finished out year one there, started out the second year, I thought I was going to make it, got cut again, put on Tampa's practice squad, activated at San Diego like six weeks later, went there. So you moved from got, Tampa to San Diego in the yep, middle of the season? Yep, okay. yep, moved there, um, um, get to, so started go to San Diego, I'm there for like three or four weeks, I ended up uh, playing uh, left tackle. I ended up going in. Um, I was a backup. Get a high ankle sprain uh, three plays in. So I'm, I'm taking care of that. I finally recover. They cut me Saturday in Kansas City before the game. I ended up watching the game on Sunday on the sideline. <laughs> after practicing all week. Yeah, after practicing, you know, we're doing a walkthrough at Kansas City. I get cut. Um, so watch watch the game on the sideline. Like, and then. Uh, so they cut you, but you could still stay? <laughs> yeah, they told me, you're just going to be like you're part of the team still. And, uh, <laughs> that we're gonna, is weird. They said that they're going to um, sign me back to the active once I clear waivers. Um, got uh, claimed here to Minnesota. So he didn't clear waivers. Minnesota clear. picks him up. <laughs> Come to Minnesota. And um, so keep in mind, I came from literally the two hottest teams to the coldest one. It was November. I, I had one je- one pair of jeans, one sweatshirt. So I was freezing. First thing I do, go to the Mall of America, and I just, like, load up with all the winter gear. We're big Mall of America. Like, yeah, big MOA. Oh, yes. yeah. MOA. Yeah. Uh, finish out the season there. Uh, next year, um, get cut. <laughs> Put on practice squad here. Get cut from that hour, oh, an hour later. I don't mean uh, to laugh at it, but it's comical. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I'm, I'm like, my age is like, just hang around. So I'm like, okay, uh, you know, I was getting tired of hanging out in the hotel. Like, screw it, I'm flying to flying home. So I go to Seattle, land in Seattle. I had like 50 missed calls from my agent. <laughs> He's like, hey, uh, you're on uh, St. Louis Rams practice squad now. <laughs> I was like, oh. I was like, I literally just flew across country. So I was actually able to stay one night in Portland, so that was pretty cool. And then flew, flew to uh, St. Louis, was on their practice squad, got activated at Carolina. And so then, Carolina uh, activates him from St. Louis. So now he has to go to Carolina. Yeah, yeah. How you even remember all this is mind-blowing. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's crazy. So, and he's uh, got a wife and kids through all this. Yeah. So they're moving. Yeah. So she, yeah, my wife, God bless her. I mean, she's been <laughs> all over the place, and we've spent plenty of holidays and hotels. And, wow. Um, yeah. So you go to Carolina and stabilize a little bit, yeah, win so a lot of games, Carolina. play in a Super Bowl. Yeah, go to Carolina. They had a lot of injuries and uh, ended up uh, starting out, starting, I think it was like five or six games, went to the playoffs, uh, lost in Seattle. And then next year, uh, started that year, the whole entire season, um, went to the Super Bowl, and then the following year start, started there, and then um, ended up signing here. In free so agency, back. comes so all the way back. back after they yeah. cut him from the P squad. Comes back as a as a you know free agent signing. Is that your average lineman's story, or is that pretty unique? <sighs> I think there are more stories like that than people realize. I think fans look at the stars and see a guy with a team for 12 to 15 years and they assume that's the way the NFL is it's not that's yeah. the the few the lucky but the majority of players especially one who's undrafted that's going to be their journey is bouncing around hoping to hang on find a good fit 
I mean, he started on a team that went 15-1 and one and went to the Super Bowl and protected the guy who was NFL MVP that year. Yeah. And yet he was undrafted and multiple teams cut him. And so his story is the kind of story that a lot of people take encouragement from and feel like if, you know, if Mike can, can do it from what he went through, then I can do it. And that's why guys keep working and hang on. Mike, I've been a little bit hard on the offensive lineman on this podcast a couple of times, oh, but last night I thought you guys were phenomenal. I oh, appreciate that. I want to give you a chance to defend yes. the one play. You, go, you take us through it. Sure. So near the end of the game, we call a drop back pass. Okay. And the term for that play is very similar to the term for one of our screens. And yeah. Mike heard <laughs> the word for the screen. And so uh, I'm dropping back, and Mike basically just gives the lookout block. In other words, he looks at the guy and turns around and tells me, look out. I was the, the best encouraging part is- the rush because I thought it was a screen. I literally hit him. In the back, like forced him quicker. Saying, here you go. I'm going to do a screen. and then um, Go ahead and rush the quarterback. Yeah, and as I'm clubbing him, I see Kirk not doing a screen set, and I'm just like, oh, God. Oh, God, what did I just do? And... Um, yeah, no, so Things I like think that we're going to change his names probably. Yeah, we're going to change the terms around. Yeah. But we can't uh, say the, we can't the, the mouthpiece in, too. It like, yeah. And, you're, you know, there's a lot of environment. That's there's a lot yeah. going on. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't believe I was the only one that, that <laughs> heard that. But I need to enunciate. What's the conversation like on the sideline right after that happens? I don't know if you told me right away. You were apologetic right away, but I wasn't sure what for. And then I think you told me on the sideline, one of the coaches told me, you know, this is what he heard. And I said, oh, okay. And you then probably just thought he got beat punted, off the line or something. And they fumbled, I believe, if I remember the sequence of events yep. right. And That's so right. then we got the ball right back. So Mike was running back out, fist bumping, like, <laughs> yeah. redeemed. No harm at oh, all. Oh, man. Yeah, no, that's, that definitely helped a lot having that happen. I mean, it's, it's just it's a critical time. You know, you can't have yeah. that, that big of a mistake there. And uh, no, I, I pretty upset about it but, but he uh, played well throughout the whole game the, yeah the line Ran the, the ball played. protected yeah. both sacks i mean that was the one sack was a little miscommunication and the other sack was a three-man rush where i held on to the ball for about eight seconds so you take two sacks and you look at both of them and say that really isn't a old line protection right. issue and uh you know, I think it 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 uh, says a lot about those guys so as we do every victory monday on the officialized experience we're going to kick off this game breakdown by giving out a few game balls to players, coaches, people, things that we felt like were excellent yesterday, worthy of a game ball. So I got a ball right here. Nice. <laughs> now I'm going to kick us off, okay? My first game ball goes to the crowd slash atmosphere last mm, night. Yeah. So I've never, been, I've never been to a night game um, yeah. for the Vikings, and it was incredible. Mm. First of all, I want to comment on – do you guys get to see all the content they make? Have you seen the, like, Pro Bowl promo videos? A little bit, but it's during TV timeouts or it's before we run out of the field, so we don't get a full yeah. taste They're, of like, it. full movie trailer quality <laughs> incredible. Yeah. It, it was also as loud as I can ever remember being at yeah. a game consistently throughout last night. That was yeah. the kicker. Is like I didn't think it lulled at all. Right. So yeah. my game ball goes to the atmosphere. Definitely. Well said. My game ball goes to Kyle Rudolph. Um, he catches everything. He, he just doesn't drop us. And thing. I think that comment gets lost a little bit because you think, well, they're NFL receivers. They should catch everything. And what I'm trying to say is among people with world-class catching ability, he's the best. I mean, he is world-class among world-class. And to have hands that natural is remarkable. And he caught a one-handed pass yesterday, had – that was almost on the ground. Catches, yeah. Moved the chains for us. And if you go back and watch the film, you'll see there were two or three other times where he should have gotten the ball and didn't. So great to see him get going. And I just can't say enough about his ability to catch the football. Kyle Rudolph, game nice. ball to you. Nice. Mike? I'm going to have to cut this ball in half. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to give it to uh, Latavius and Dalvin because those guys were running so hard all game, downhill. Um, you know, they were loading the box on us and – um, we had some really hard, hard uh, runs there. Um, first half didn't go as well as we wanted to, but we just kept pounding it and um, pound the beef. Kept, 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 pound kept, the pound, beef. kept pounding the beef. And uh, there at the end, when we really needed it, we we were able to run the ball well. 
and uh, so I'd have to give it to them. Well Kirk, done. Kirk tells me that whenever he sneaks, you guys really play up the oh, pound, pound of beef. They That's love when I quarterback sneak. My favorite play right there. And they usually are yelling pound the beef before the play's even over. Yeah. They're so excited. <laughs> it's so good. I got another one if I can. Um, my second game ball goes to Kirk Cousins. Okay. I ha- No, oh, yeah. I know. Kirk doesn't know I'm going to do this, but I have to point this out. Okay, Mike, I'm going to blow your mind. Did you know these is this is Kirk's four appearances against the Packers, okay? He's a total of 1471 yards, 12 touchdowns to one pick. He's averaging 367 yards a game against a massive division rival. I thought it was one of your best games. I know you didn't know I was going to do this, but my game ball goes to you. Well, beat. thanks for saying that. I when we signed with the Vikings, it became very clear in the offseason that this rivalry means a lot to the people of Minnesota. And I certainly felt this was important. Uh, and so, fortunately, we go another season without having lost to them, and I think we'll enjoy that this offseason as we run into people throughout the state. I think they'll appreciate the fact that we, we beat the Packers. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Any more shout-outs you guys want to give? Oh, let's give it to uh, Minnesota for bringing back the, uh, the Axe. Yeah, true. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. yeah. Minnesota needs a win against Wisconsin. To get to a bowl game, they go into Wisconsin, having not won in many years, and get it done. The Gophers tweeted a video of the guys trying to get the axe through security out front. It was pretty funny. <laughs> it was pretty funny. It's That's like in a bag. Like, oh, hopefully they don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> I love it. That's absolutely outstanding. So, also, people want to know about the uh, the limbo celebration. Can you give us any insight? It so was we pretty, were, pretty excellent. We were in the locker room beforehand, just like we were with the dead arm dance, and guys started talking about it then. They said, hey, if we score, let's do a limbo. And I thought... Man, good luck with that. This is going to be hard to pull off. But they did it. And it, you see when Dalvin scores, I mean, he looks back right away and is motion everybody like, let's go, you know, because he knows with the play clock, we only have so much time. And to their credit, Adam got up there, Tom Compton held him up, and they limoed underneath. They did it. I was, I was just disappointed I didn't go and join. And uh, kudos to them for getting that done. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think you guys were having a celebration, right? Like a high five. And then yeah, we were high five. Like Usually yeah. Mike's there for a good high five. Yeah. and. Fist bump and I didn't quite get the memo on that, so I was like 30 yards back, and really the last thing I want to do is run all the way down there. I was pretty <laughs> exhausted, so they all, I'll settle with a high five. You know, you know when we had Tom on here good. too, he talked about you know conserving those those jogs by getting to the huddle early. Yep. Yeah, that seems to be a trend here. Yep. Oh yeah, uh-huh. we got to conserve our energy. This oh, yeah. game tests. Yeah, it's a long game. Long <laughs> game. <laughs> it's a long game. <laughs> so I felt like the pass protection was excellent yesterday. Mm-hmm. Maybe both of you can take fans through what goes into that. Why did it work so well yesterday? Well, it starts with the identification. You know, our center has to do a good job getting us to the right people, and our running back has to do a good job of sorting everyone else and figuring out who he has to help on. And and then from there, we just have to be stout. We have to hold up, and then i got to get the ball out. And, um, you know, it's not easy to say, you know, hey, anchor on that three technique who's bull rushing you. I mean, that is a tough job. But uh, they did it, and like you said, just didn't feel a lot of push didn't feel a lot of throws where someone's falling at my feet. And I think when you look at the completion percentage or the accuracy or those kinds of things or just the consistent production in the pass game, it goes back to the fact that I'm standing back there and, and able to feel comfortable. Yeah, it's um, like you are saying, it does start with all with identification because they bring some pretty unique looks. And uh, we were able to communicate. Th- you know, we're at home, which is, which is great because we're able to communicate easier. So... Um, we were able to communicate and uh, execute the plays, and I think uh, getting the run game going helps the play action. We had some good screens on them, and all that yeah. all that helps the protection. Um, you know, when they don't know that we're just going to drop back pass sure. every time, it, it makes it a lot easier. So. so three quick kind of questions tied to that. One, you've switched positions a lot, right? Like you've played a lot of positions yeah. of the line. Yeah. How how does that change? How is that different? Because I think fans yeah. just think offensive line, same <laughs> kind of thing. Right. How has that you know changed things for it's you? It's all the same. It's just, <laughs> um, no, it's it, it is it is difficult. It's very difficult to switch from like the right to left. Or it's left really to like right. being right-handed or left-handed. Yeah. You have to retrain your brain because your of your mind. footwork. Or yeah, well, I, just think about like like the way my hips are right now are so like open to the right because I've been in a right-handed stance for so long. Then to go into the left, it feels so awkward. Like you do yeah. something over and over and over with your right hand, and then all of a sudden now you have to do it with your left. It is, it is different. Um, so being able to switch sides, that, that is uh, definitely challenging. And it's hard um, to then become an expert at your position. 
because you uh, become a jack of all trades but a master at, at none. But it makes yeah. people like Mike more valuable maybe that he can do that, right? Versatility helps. They always talk about the more you can do. But, boy, it certainly helps if you can become a master at your craft, yeah. and it's hard to do that when you're moving around. Yeah. And do you have a favorite position then? Um, uh, like what is like what is Mike Remmers at heart? What are you? Yeah, right tackle is okay. that's probably – I mean, I've had the most experience there. Um, yeah. But bumping down to right guard, I feel pretty comfortable there now. And I've, I've, I've had a lot of experience there now that uh, I feel good. I feel like I've grown at the position. I feel like I've uh, improved a lot each week. I've learned a lot. Like watching the game from Green Bay week two, I'm, I'm seeing mistakes. I was making that like I've learned from those. And, and um, mm. I think it, it's just one of those things that just it just keeps growing. You keep growing and adapting and learning. And if you don't, then you're done playing. You're going <laughs> to yeah, be out true. there. So you better keep growing. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday was incredible. Defense showed up again. That's about maybe five or six weeks in a row they've played at an excellent level. Mm -hmm. um, excellent. But on offense, one of my favorite plays of the day that I want you to take us through is, I think it was the second touchdown, or maybe the last touchdown to Adam, the bootleg to the right yeah. that you dumped off to Adam. But my favorite part about it is it looks like you're looking to tread well deep. There's kind of a mm -hmm. safety hanging over there. And then at the last minute, you're not even looking at him. You're looking this way, and you get the defender too. Yeah bite on the run and the last second you dumped it at him. I think those are things that go missing to the average fan. Really good play design by Coach Flip and really good play call at that time. If you'll, you'll notice if you watch the film, Clay Matthews could have played up the field and pretty much killed the play, which he did later when we ran a similar play to our left side. Clay Matthews basically killed the play and I threw it away. But uh, Kyle Rudolph coming across the formation, Clay's thinking it's a run. He wrong arms it, comes underneath, and it enables me to get the edge. And then I'm just attacking the line of scrimmage at that point, and I felt like we had a little bit of a two-on-one on, on Tremont Williams. He was either having to come at me to stop me running or he had to stay with Adam, and I just tried to press the line of scrimmage to force him to decide, kind of like a fast break in basketball. And he eventually left Adam and came over to me, and then that's when I felt like I could dump it. And if you notice, Diggsy's also coming open along the uh, five-yard line across the field. So I, I had some good options there, which goes back to play design when you give a quarterback a lot of options. I have been beating the table for this for a long time, but I need more of Dalvin in space. Yeah. I need him Amen. in space. Mm -hmm. The screen on the yeah. first play or the swing pass, whatever it was, is that a screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just a screen. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. And I need more of that. I feel like when we just when we beat him up the middle, it's not playing into his strengths. Right. If you notice later in the game, you start doing some of those stretch runs. Yeah, toss sweeps. Toss, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I agree. I need more of that, yeah. I agree. I, I, how you do it is, you know, that comes down to Monday and Tuesday, coaches getting in there and getting creative and mm -hmm. having a plan. But it doesn't have to be the run game. It can be the pass game. We threw a, a wide route to him to the outside on a, on a quick game play. I think it was a third quarter that he caught and got us five, six yards. Um, well, and digs on the jet sweep. More of just the space yeah. stuff. Yeah, I, think, we, I feel yeah, like yeah. it accentuates yeah. what you guys on the offensive line do yeah. well. Quick, quick hitting plays. Yeah, that sweep, that sweep we ran to Dalvin was a productive play as well early in the game, and then we came back with it to Digsy as well, and that's been a good play for us all year. But um, I, I couldn't agree with you more. So your dad and I got into a big argument in the suite <laughs> yesterday about the fourth and two play call at the end of the game. Um, yeah. I was a big proponent of I liked going for it yeah. because I feel like if Aaron Rodgers is going to roll anyways enough to go get a uh, touchdown and a field goal, yeah. he probably could get a touchdown touchdown, right? right? So 13 and 10, there's no difference. That's what I thought. He thought you should take the points. As players, what is that fourth and two call when you're out there? What, is that, what message does that send to you, and do you like it or not like it? What do you think, Mike? I just do whatever they tell me to do. <laughs> Amen. So if they, you know, they think it's best to go for it, I'm all for it, and I'm going to do the best I possibly can on that play. So that's See, really. I, I don't think at all about. Is what a it microcosm is. of an O lineman's personality. If we're going to stereotype, that is O lineman, right? And that's why you love them. Because at the end of the day, they just want to do their do job. Do what it takes. Do what it takes. Serve the team. Put themselves out there and let the chips fall where they may. Well, and to be fair, you probably don't even really have time to be calculating all those things no, that I just I said think anyways. As, well, I'm the kind of guy that's going to sit on the sidelines and think about those options. I think that it's really hard to make a call there because if you make them have to drive the length of the field twice instead of just getting into field goal range, I think that does make a difference, especially with time running out. That being said, we can finish the game there. I mean, yeah. if we do hit that pass and people game, were open, you go back and over. watch it, there are, there are opportunities there to score. Not just convert, but score. So when you look at it that way, you say game's over. Man, we got a chance to go win it at our place. You know, I, I can go both ways on it. I understand the aggressiveness, and um, 
you know, I think our, as players, we, we love that Coach Zimmer has enough faith in us as an offense to get the job done. I This is going to maybe seem backhanded, but um, in a weird way, I'm encouraged by how many mistakes – were made yesterday, and yet how complete of a team win that was, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. The the beginning of the game got off to a rocky start with a uh, um, a weird screen that got blown up, the yeah. 12 men in the huddle going right. for it on fourth down, stuff like that. But um, I just felt like in general, even with all those mistakes and points that were kind of left on the board, some missed field goals, um, maybe a drop here or there, um, that play didn't lead to more points. You guys, you, were, you guys were on the five-yard line when we were doing that. I so I feel like actually going forward, I'm encouraged that – because we can play better football. Yeah. yeah. Like, you yeah. you pretty much dominated the game, moved the ball better than them, and yeah. won by 10, and I feel like there's more in there. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Certainly didn't play a perfect game. And if we can put it all together, you know, I, I like our chances down the stretch. And I think that's part of it is, like, there's no such thing as a perfect game, and, and true. stuff happens. That's very true. And we're able to adapt and overcome it. And, you know, I think a lot of teams – you know, if they get behind early, they kind of just, all right, the game's over, we'll go to the next one. But uh, being able to make some adjustments and, to, you know, figure it out, keep her calm, keep her cool out there, and I think that's a big part of the, the success that we had out there. I find myself having to remind myself of that a lot this year. Like, nothing's going to ever be perfect. Okay, so what? You missed a field goal. Everybody misses a field goal, or you fumbled the ball one time. That happens in football. Mm-hmm. So right. I agree with that adversity uh, comment. Okay, so off the – topic of the game i hear you're big into golf oh yeah so oh, yeah. kirk and i are big golfers big golf nice. fans mike and i went on a golf trip this past spring with adam thielen and uh mike's ability to trip. rally mike's ability to rally and scramble is incredible i mean it's all like phil mickelson yeah. unbelievable golf trip because of where it was it was yeah went over to wisconsin went into packer territory oh and we hit played up some of those courses in in that state and it was a lot of fun so yeah. Tell us about your ability to rally. Well, you cannot have the shot of the day from the fairway. You gotta be in, <laughs> That's you a gotta great be line. In, you got to be in the thick stuff. And um, I keep, you know, letting these guys know. I, I know what I'm doing out there. If I hit it, you know, if I slice it or hook it, I'm, I'm doing that on purpose. There's a reason why I'm doing it, because there's a better attack angle coming to the green. <laughs> Absolutely. The sand traps, I take the sand traps out of it. I want to be in the thick stuff, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. You can't get Mike out of it. And, you know, Mike's from Portland. Nike's in Portland. He's a big Nike guy. So mm. he usually has the best golf outfits, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, he'll have some Jordans that have been made into golf shoes. He's got, <laughs> you know, Nike hats, all the gear. Yeah. So we're both Nike guys. and Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Well, you know, I feel like between Adam and Tom and you and – we're going to have to have, like, an officialized experience golf outing at some point here. I love it. Where we yeah. We've talked about having, like, a little tour or, like, a little weekend bouncing around the Twin Cities, the best courses, and mm. having a little – Like, do a little tournament. Awesome. A little tournament That'd or something really like that. Cool. Any factor in our handicaps? Yeah. Who's yeah. better between Adam, Tom, Mike? Adam. Adam's the best. Yeah. Mike, then, is miles ahead of Tom. <laughs> okay. we got to get Tom, <laughs> Poor Tom. some better clubs. <laughs> Yeah. But he Better holds go. his hands are so big. He holds his golf clubs. He doesn't have the fat grips, so he holds them. It looks like he's holding a toothpick. <laughs> Amazing. So we got to get yeah. fat grips for yeah. his big hands. Yeah. Amazing. So every week we uh, ask fans to tweet us. Do you have a Twitter? I do. Yeah. What's your Twitter? Give a shout uh, out here. M Remmer seventy four. M Remmer seventy four. Instagram, <laughs> same thing. Same thing. Okay, same thing. Uh, but every week we ask for people to use the hashtag Ask Kirk and send us questions. Okay, okay? and uh, we go through those, and it's kind of our way to have Kirk interact with right. people. And so I want you guys to answer all these. I, got, I, I, I sorted it down to three questions. Great. Okay. <clears throat> Question number one, um, can Linval Joseph kill a bear with his bare hands, do you think? Yeah. Without Depends a weapon. on the type of bear, but. <laughs> I'd say yes. <laughs> <laughs> he has to block him all training camp. I would think so. Yeah. I mean, if anyone could, it's him. <laughs> okay. So uh, I would say yeah. <laughs> Good, Kirk. Yes. Yeah, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Okay. Maybe give the bear a weapon to make it easy. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. To make it a fair fight. <laughs> the bear's running around with a machine gun. <laughs> um, what's your guys' favorite Thanksgiving dish or tradition? Question number two. Wow. I asked this question to my family at Thanksgiving. I said, what is the best side dish of all? I'm going to say stuffing slash dressing, whatever your term for it is. Okay. It's a rookie. But, man, it's a tough call. Rookie mistake there. It's all about the deviled eggs. 
deviled eggs. Come on. Who eats deviled you, eggs at that Thanksgiving? Is, are you kidding that me? That is out of left field. That is. There. You got sweet hey. potatoes. You got green bean hey. casserole. You Turkey. got mashed potatoes. We need to do like some sort of poll. I guarantee you there's a lot of people that would pick it. All right, I'm going to put a poll well, out there. Yeah, let's put it out there. We'll see. Deviled eggs. Deviled deviled eggs. eggs. I love it. No. I didn't even know people eat deviled eggs. <clears throat> no. at Are you kidding me? Come on, guys. Wow. You know what? <laughs> okay. I'm going to let you have your Thanksgiving. You had all the linemen over. You guys probably had a great time. Yeah. Ate a lot of deviled eggs. It was, yeah. Well, and here's so, a little tie into that. Eight. Didn't uh, didn't he help you hook hook you up with the Christmas tree too? The holidays. Oh, so Mike and I both live in Inver Grove, okay. and there are very few people in this organization living in Inver Grove. So okay. we're the few, the proud. Mm-hmm. And I was having a hard time finding a place to get a real Christmas tree. And Mike told me about Gertens, which is in Inver Grove. Yep. Gertens. And you can go and get. I mean, it is it is the North Pole right now. It is. Santa's there. You got trees galore. They've got all the decorations you Santa's need. Santa's there. They, yeah. had a, <laughs> they had a ceramic setup of just Christmas vacation mm-hmm. figurines. It was unbelievable. So anyways, my wife and I are going to go back there on the off day. We were so impressed. But yep. I learned it all because of Mike Remmers and his knowledge of Invergrove. Wow. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, it was actually a totally, total fluke that uh, I just happened to look it up, and I was like, yeah, let's go check this place out, and uh, very impressed. Very impressed. <laughs> They're getting the biggest shout-out ever right now. Very impressed, <laughs> and uh, our house looks like Gertens now. So. <laughs> <laughs> they brought Gertens home. Yep. That's and amazing. we're starting to bring Gertens home, too. It's, yep. it's, our house is looking very nice right now. Well, we're kind of turning the page on Thanksgiving. Getting yeah. Into, it's acceptable. The time now, has come. The weather's yeah. dropped. Oh, yeah. It's time. Do you have a favorite Christmas movie? Christmas Vacation. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, my Classic. goodness. I have a list on my phone of all the ones I need to work through. There's like 15. Okay. And I try to watch them between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Okay. And Meaning you haven't seen them ever? Yeah. No, I've seen them all. I okay, watch okay, them every okay. year. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Jingle All the Way, which was filmed in the, the Twin way. Cities. Okay. Christmas Vacation, obviously. Wait, Elf, Jingle All the Way was here? Yep. White Christmas. Oh, yeah. It's a Wonderful Life. But then there's some deep cuts. Trapped in Paradise is an all-time favorite Christmas movie of mine. Silent Night. I, I don't really know like. either of those. Um, I love Daddy's Home too. Last year, that was a Christmas movie. Didn't see Elf. It. Elf, yeah. I'm, I'm then, a big I'm a big Elf guy. Um, I watch the only movie I watch every year, Christmas yeah. time. I yeah, I, I love a good Christmas movie. And then I thought of this idea this year, since we're big Office fans, mm. I want to sit down and watch all mm. the Office Christmas episodes back to back to back, as if I'm watching a Christmas yeah. movie. Specifically, when Michael and Phyllis are battling out for Santa. Absolutely. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yes. Do, do you guys count uh, Lethal, Lethal Weapon as a Christmas They're movie? They're Die Hard. Or Die Hard. Die Hard. Sorry, that's that's, yeah, die that's the know. ongoing debate. Yeah, that's, do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like the confidence. Okay, the last Ask Kirk question that I got was, well, actually, it was a lot of them kind of summarizing the fact that you ran the ball a few times last, yeah. yesterday. Um, what goes into that? What factors into you running, not running? Do you want to do it more? Do you want to do it less? How do you decide that? Blah, blah. There was a lot of questions about that. Well, we had a third and one last week against the Bears, and I pushed up in the pocket and could have run for the first down, chose to throw it into a crowd to Digsy, and it was incomplete. And fortunately, we did convert the fourth down. But the point was made throughout last week that, you know, I have an ability to run. The athleticism's there for the most part, but sometimes I just don't choose to use it. And so we talked about, again, not going to look for opportunities to run, but being ready when they present themselves and instinctually being ready to run. So this past game, I just tried to be aware of that the best I could. I don't know that I had any game-changing runs or I don't even know that I got a first down out of any of them, but was trying to, you know, exhaust progressions and then be ready to take off and hopefully use some ability to be mobile just like I do on the bootlegs and try to use that too in the drop-back pass and push up in the pocket and give a run-pass thread. And, you know, I'll go back and watch the film and see how effective it was and, and then – just try to continue to have an awareness of it and hopefully steal a couple first downs here and there by running the football. I think if nothing else, that pocket movement helps your case no matter what. But Yeah, just moving around, keeping your eyes downfield, and um, even if you can move and then find a completion, you know, that's still good mobility. I always talk about Tom Brady's one of the most mobile quarterbacks in the NFL just because of how he can negotiate within the pocket and prolong a play. And obviously he's not going to run a 4-4 or take off, but he still can avoid the rush in a way that makes him in a way mobile. So speaking of Tom Brady, we got the Patriots this week. Um, give us a rundown of what the Patriots look like so far to you, both of you. I haven't studied them a lot, but I played there in 2015, 
certainly a tough place to play. You look at the statistics, not many teams come out of there with a win. But, um, you know, it's they're a good team. They Obviously, great quarterback. Fortunately, we don't have to worry on offense about – uh, about their offense, but uh, we'll study their defense. And I know if, if I know anything about Coach Belichick and their coaching staff, they'll have a good plan against us to try to take away what we do well, and we're going to have to be ready to answer. On the offensive line, when you're watching film on a team like the Patriots, what are you watching for specifically? Um, I mean, I'm just watching how the linebackers react to certain plays, how the defensive line reacts, if there's any tells of how they're going to – what moves they're going to bring. And – um, study a lot of their pass rush tape and see see what they like to do, where their go tos. Um, but I just kind of try to put myself in the shoes of the whoever's playing them and see like what they did, and and uh, that's part of the learning. Is you see, oh, this guy had a lot of success doing you know, maybe a specific technique on a play, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should start doing it that way because that obviously is working. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just I'm, I mean I'm watching not just the D-line and the linebackers, but I'm also watching the offensive line and seeing what they do. Absolutely. Cool. Well, you know, it's the middle of this tough stretch right now. That's but right. But last night's win was huge for mm-hmm. helping our case. So everything's still in front of you guys. That's it's, right. You know, it's all out there. we got to go get it. Yep. Let's go get it. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Hey, thanks for having me on. Um, it's a blast. Thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, tune in next week after we break down the Patriots game. And you can use the hashtag Ask Kirk to get any questions in. This is the Officialized Experience. You can find it on officialized.com, um, anywhere podcasts are found. And we love you guys. Thanks for listening. And have a great week. Yeah.